So today we will talk about chapter 34, lesson four, which talking about electric resistance. Now, the resistance of a wire depends on the conductivity of the material used in the wire and the thickness and the length of the wire. The amount of charge that flows on a circuit depends on the voltage provided by the voltage source. Now, before talking about resistance, the amount of charge, okay, the quantity of charge that flows on a circuit depends on the voltage. If the potential difference between the wires is great, the flow of charge will be great. And also, the current depends on the resistance of the conductor. What does it mean? If you have two pipes, one is plastic and one is metal, is the flowing of charge in the plastic will be the same in the, in the metal? No. Why? Because the flow of charge, it's not only depend on the potential difference, it also depends on the resistance of the pipe. So the flow of charge depends on the current, the, uh, the flow of charge so it depends on the voltage and also depends on the resistance of the wire. That's we later on talk about it, which we call it Ohm's law. V equal I over R. So the resistance depends, uh, the current, sorry, depends on the voltage and depends on the resistance. Why? Because it depends on the amount of the potential difference between the two points of the wire and depends on the resistance of the wire. And the resistance now depends on the length of the wire. Are the flow of the wire in um, one meter pipe is the same in one centimeter? No. If the thickness of the wire is for two millimeters squared, is it like the same, it, the flow in this thickness, thickness? Imagine that you have these two pipes, this pipe here, and other one which is greater. Imagine now there's a flow of charge. Is the amount of charge and the flow of charge in the thickness one will be the same in the uh, greatest one and in the widest one? No, it will be different. So the current depends on the voltage and depends on the resistance. And the resistance depends on the material of the pipe which is made and on the length and on the thickness. This is similar to the rate of water flow in a pipe. The rate of water flow, it depends on the pressure difference and the resistance of the pipe. As we said here, the flow of charge depends on the voltage and in the resistance, also the rate of water flow. It depends on the pressure difference, which is the same as the voltage and the resistance of the pipe. So the flow of charge depends on the potential difference between these two points and also it depends on the resistance of the pipe. Is this, resist is this pipe allow me to flow as the other pipe? No. If they don't have the same material, they, they, if they have different material with different length, with different thickness, the flow of charge in this pipe will be different than the flow of charge in the other pipe. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. Yes, teacher. Okay. Yes. So for a given pressure. So by now we said that the flow of charge depends 
on a voltage and on a resistance. So for a given pressure, more water passes through a large pipe than a smaller one. If you have a large pipe like this, if you have a smaller pipe, which water will be passed through, or which water will be greater? If it passes through the smaller pipe or the greater pipe? The greater. The greater one, yeah. So since now the more water passes through the greater one, so the flow of charge depends on the length of the, of the pipe. And also, for a given voltage, more electric current passes through a large diameter wire than a small diameter one. If you have a smaller one and a smaller diameter with a greater diameter, where the flow of charge will pass greater in the smaller or in the, the greater diameter? In the greater diameter. Here, there's a flow of charge will be greater. So, the flow of charge depends on the voltage between the two points and depends on the resistance. That means it depends on the thickness of the wire, like we say here that the diameter, large pipe, more flow, small pipe, or small diameter, less flow and also in the length of the bulb. Because more water passes through the large pipe than the smaller one. Here now, uh, before I talk about this one here, so the resistance of a wire depends on what? Now, so we say that the current depends on the voltage and the resistance. Now, the resistance depends on the conductivity of the material, thickness, length, and temperature. So, the resistance of the wire depends on the conductivity, length, thickness, and temperature. So, the resistance of a wire depends on the conductivity of the material on the wire, what does it mean? That means is the electrical resistance or is the resistance for or is the flow of charge in the plastic pipe as the same in metal pipe? No. So because of that, it depends on the conductivity of the material and the thickness of it and the length of the wire. That's mean thickness wire or thick wire, sorry have less resistance than the thin wire. Longer wires have more resistance than the short wire. And so, before that, so the thick wire have less resistance than the thin wire, and longer wire have more resistance than the short wire. So the resistance here have a directly proportional with the length, inversely proportional with the thickness. If you increase the length, the, re the resistance will increase. If you decrease the thickness, the resistance will be decreased. So it depends on the conductivity, thickness, length, and temperature. Electric resistance also depends on the temperature. For most conductors, increased temperature mean increased resistance. Now, we know that the type of materials are conductors, insulator, insulator and semiconductor. For the conductors, we have a resistivity that's different than the insulator, different than the semiconductor. But before talking about them, let's 
don't forget that a current depends on the voltage and on the resistance, and the resistance depends on conductivity, thickness, length, and temperature. Now, here we have a wire, that's a cross-sectional area of a wire. For this shape here, the resistance depends on the material of which, of which the object is composed, as I told you before. Different materials offer different resistance in the flow of charge. To talk about it, we use something we call it rho or resistivity. This is the resistivity of a substance. So the R depends on the resistivity of the material. Because as I told you, the pipe is plastic, it's different than the metal, it's different than copper, different than aluminium, and so on. So it depends on the material that's composed from it. And we present, uh, we uh, talk about it in the formula as a rho or resistivity. <coughs> now, and also it depends on the length. And the length of the pipe and the thickness of the pipe, or we say it's the area of the pipe. So the resistance R depends on the cross-sectional area A and the length of the cylinder and the which material that this pipe is made from and which we represent it by a rho or the stability. So the resistance has a or equal now without this uh, sign here, rho L over A, where rho is a resistivity, L is the length, A is the area. The unit of R is in ohm. L is in millimeter square or millimeter, A is millimeter, but R here is ohm. Now, what is the difference between the resistivity and the resistance? The resistivity, which is rho, depends on the material only. But the resistance depends on the size, shape, and the material. The resistivity depends on the material, and the resistance depends on the material and size and shape. This is the resistivity. It depends only on the material. But the resistance R depends only, it depends on the material, the length, and the cross-sectional area. Here now, this is, these tables present me or tell me about the resistivities of the materials at 20 Celsius temperature. The material listed in the table are separated into categories of conductor, semiconductor, and insulator. As I told you, the, resist the resistivity for the conductor is different than the semiconductor, different than the insulator. Conductors have the smallest resistivities. Insulator have the largest one, and the semiconductor have between the resistivity or intermediate resistivity between them. Let's see now the conductors here. Examples, silver, copper, gold, aluminium, tungsten, iron, platinum, steel, lead, uh, mercury, nichrome, man manganese, constantian. All of these now, the resistivity of them is small. Look at it, it's 1.59 times 10 raised to the power negative 8. This is very small. So, the resistivity for the, material, for the conductors are the smallest one. And the resistivity, it is in row, and its unit is ohm. This is mean ohm per meter. Ohm per meter. For the semiconductor, 
I told you they are between them. Insulator, they are the largest one. Look at the insulator, like the amp, a glass, um, telephone, wood. That's why sometimes if they use an, uh, the wire, if you look at it, it doesn't made from aluminium or gold or copper because there's a, a greater resistance if you mean if you multiply this uh, smaller resistance for it of a smaller resistivity sorry but the insulator here which is the glass quartz rubber sulfur telephone wood here look at the resistivity of the rubber it's very great it has, has a greater resistivity that means there's no waste of the current that's where the wire that we see with the, are made from rubber or uh, sometimes uh, from teflon or so on why because it has a greater resistance greater or greater resistivity greater resistance it has a, no there's no loss in the current and the semiconductor like carbon silicon germanium they have a resistance they are between the insulator and between the conductor so these tables now represent the resistivity, the rho of the materials at 20 Celsius temperature. Now let's see how can we find the resistance. I told you now the resistance is rho L times A. Calculate the resistance of a copper wire of a length 5 meter. So, the length is 5 meter and the diameter is 2 millimeter. But here now, this is a copper wire. So, what does it mean? I need to find its resistivity from where? Come back. Here. Where's the copper? It's 1.72 times 10 to the power negative 8 from the table. So 1.72 times 10 to the power negative 8. This is for resistivity times the length in meter and the diameter here it's 2 millimeter. Sorry. So here I need to find the area. You know that the wire, if the cross-sectional area of the wire is a circle. So I need to find the area of the circle. How? It is by R squared. By. If the diameter is 2 millimeter, so the radius is 1 millimeter. But I don't want it in millimeter, I want it in meter. So, by 1,000 squared, divide it by 1,000 squared, because 1 millimeter is 10 to the power 3 meter. So, it is 10 to the power negative 6, this is an R squared, times by, So it will be 3.14 times 10 to the power negative 6. This is the area. So don't forget the diameter, the length, or the area. The length, it must be in meter. The, resist, the resistivity, I found it from the table. Then 1.72 times 10 to the power negative 8. Let's find now the resistance. 1.72 times 5 over 3.14 this is a 2.73 times 10 to the power negative 2 ohm so the resistance of the copper wire, copper wire is 2.73 times 10 to the power negative 2 ohm the second one yes 
Do you have to memorize the numbers in the table? Sorry? Do we have to memorize the numbers in the table? No, 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 no. no it will be given. Okay. A wire made of a copper alloy is five meter in length as has a cross-sectional area of one millimeter squared. If their resistance is 1.15 ohm, calculate the resistivity of this alloy. Here, they give me the resistance. They give me the area. They give me the length. And they ask me to find rho. Now, the resistance is rho L over A. So the resistance times A over L equal the resistivity, which I have to find it. So the resistivity here is R 0.15 ohm times the area. But this area here is one millimeter squared. Now I told you one millimeter is 10 to the power negative three meter. And one millimeter squared is 10 to the power negative six meter. So by multiplying one times 10 to the power negative six, I get the answer in meter squared. Over length, which is five. Then 0.15 over 5, which is 0 0.03 times 10 to the power negative 6, or it's a 3 times 10 to the power negative 8. Let's see now. Is it correct? We say that it is a copper. So the resistivity is a 3 times 10 to the power negative 8. Let's come back now to the table. It's What happened here? A copper alloy. times A and R times A over L. Uh, maybe, okay. Here, maybe because the temperature is different, that's why, and I, th I think that it says it has to be the same at uh, 1.72, but since Maybe because the temperature here is not certain, so I will not come. I will not, I will not compare it with this table. So here, the resistivity is one three point three times ten raised to the power negative eight. Here they give me the resistance, they give me the area, they give me the length. They ask me to find the resistivity. Another example here now. A car headlight. Filament is a made of tungsten and has a cold resistance of 0 0.35 ohm. So the resistance <coughs> is 0 0.35 ohm. If the filament is a, uh, is a cylinder 4 cm long, what is the diameter? Here, they give me 
the length, they ask me to find the diameter of the wire. We know that R, rho L over A. Now, A is 5.6 times 10 to the power negative 8. From where we get it? Because we are talking about tungsten. Let's come back to this table here. It is 5.6 times 10 to the power negative 8. Then times the length, which is 4 centimeter. We have to write it as in meter. So it's 4 times 10 to the power negative 2 over R, which is the resistance, 0.35. And now R is rho L over A. If you rewrite it, it will be A, the area, is rho L over R. So after you substitute, you will find that the area of the wire here is 6.4 times 10 to the power negative 9. This is the area. But he didn't ask me to find the area. He asked me to find the diameter. Now, we know that area is by R squared. It is a cylinder. The cross-sectional, if you cut the cylinder, you'll find a circle. So the area here, it is 6.4 times 10 to the power negative 9 equal by R squared. So R, the radius, it will be the square root of 6.4 times 10 to the power negative 9 over by. So the square root now of 6.4. Fourteen or six point four, sorry, times ten to the power negative nine over by you will get that the radius here is four point five times ten to the power negative five. This is the radius. I want the diameter. We know that if you multiplying the radius by 2, you will get the diameter. So the diameter will be 2 times the radius, which is 9 times 10 to the power negative 5 meter. Is it clear? Yes, teacher. So don't forget the activity. You have to find it from the table, or it will be given. Or, and the length, it must be in meter. If I give it to you in millimeter, you have to multiply the answer. If it is a three millimeter, so you have to write it in millimeter, in meter, so which is a three times 10 to the power negative three. If I give it to you in so if it is in. 3 millimeter, which is equal to 3 times 10 to the power negative 3. If it's a 3 centimeter, you will tell me it's a 3 times 10 to the power negative 2. You have to write the answer in meter. That's why. And for the area, if I told you it's a 3 millimeter squared, you have to say it's a 3 times 10 to the power negative 6 meters squared. And if I told you it's a 3 centimeters squared, you tell me it's a 3 times 10 to the power negative 6, negative uh, 4 meters squared. Why? Because 1 centimeter is to the power negative 2. So neg negative 2 squared, which is negative 4. Here, negative. 3. This is for 1 meter. But for the area, it's negative 3 times negative 3, which is negative 6. Because you add them. Don't forget these units here. Millimeter is 10 to the power negative 3 meter. Centimeter is 10 to the power negative 2 meter. Millimeter squared is 10 to the power negative 6 meter squared. And centimeter squared is 10 to the power negative 4 meters squared. 
So the length, it must be in meter, the area in meter squared, R, it is in ohm, and the rest of it, the unit of it, if you want to find the unit, you will say it is R A over M. So it is ohm meter squared over M. So its unit is ohm time meter. So the unit of the rest of it is ohm times meter. That's it. Do you have any question? No, teacher. Thank you. Okay. Now, by now, we finished our material.